Interstellar's theory, or central place theory, explains the arrangement of settlements for the most profitable location. Walter Christaller, a German geographer, created his theory in the 1930s and then it was later improved upon in the 1950s. Before we give you our examples, let's review two important vocab words. Range is the maximum distance a person is willing to travel for a service, and threshold is the minimum amount of people it takes to keep a service running. So why did Christaller use hexagons instead of circles or squares? Because with circles, there would be areas that would be considered unserved, and with squares, the center is an equidistant to the outside corners. In example one, we will show you a real-life example of how using circles and squares would not work. In this example, let's say the center is Phoenix, and the range is roughly 30 minutes. So we will use the city of Mesa as our end-of-range indicator. If we were to take this distance from Phoenix to Mesa and apply it all around Phoenix, we would have a circle. So, to show how the circles would be ineffective, let's add two more circles outside of the range. When we do this, smaller towns in between the ranges would be unserved. When we use squares, cities could range from 20 miles away to 25 miles or even more away, making the center not really in the center. Example 2, Minnow, North Dakota. In North Dakota, the central place theory helps explain the distribution of cities of different sizes. Bigger cities are smaller in number and spread farther apart. On the other hand, smaller cities or towns are bigger in number and are closer together. Example 3, Melbourne, Australia. There are three small cities within the range of the central place, which is Melbourne. The hinterland has high cost goods that are not needed and goods that are needed and are low cost and those are provided by local markets such as Bendigo, Ballarat, and Geelong. Transportation has evolved this theory and made range larger because people are willing to travel farther in the vehicle than travel long distance on foot or bike. While making his theory, Christeller made a bunch of assumptions about the land. The first assumption was that all land surfaces were flat. He also assumed that populations would be distributed evenly in all cities. The third assumption was that all cities had the same resources, which is clearly not the case. His fourth assumption was that consumers would go to the nearest market, which is also not the case because I would go to Woodman's instead of pick and save. He also assumed that transportation costs were the same. But it's not! Last but not least, he assumed that there would be perfect competition. So Walmart and Target would actually be the same thing. So, well, the reason we put the assumptions Christeller made into the video is to show you that the theory is definitely not perfect, but it works for the most part and can give us a good idea of how cities and surrounding towns interact, as well as how businesses choose their locations. <laughs>